In this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint this mountain landscape in acrylics. Hi everyone, Sam here, welcome to my channel. Now for those of you that have been watching this channel for a little while will know that I paint with oils, but I've had a few requests from people asking if I would do a painting in acrylics. So this video is for you. But even if you're an oil painter, stick around because the principles of colour and tone are just the same. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint this mountain landscape, which is a place called Paradise in southern New Zealand. So I just wanted to show you that you can get some pretty good results with acrylics. For some people, it's not practical to paint with oils. And one of the things that can be an advantage about acrylics is that they dry quickly. I mean, I was able to smash out this painting in an afternoon, which is pretty cool. So in this video, I'm going to show you the colours I used, the idea behind the composition, then I'll take you through the blocking in stage, then building up the detail in the painting, and then adding those final details that brings the painting together. I'll also be talking in the video about a couple of things you need to be mindful of when painting in acrylics. I haven't actually done any acrylic painting in about 10 years and I ran into a couple of problems that I completely forgot about, but I was able to easily solve them, so I'll be talking about those too. If you'd like to have a go at painting this, check the link below, there's some written notes that accompany this video. Feel free to use the reference photos and copy the painting, it's all good. Anyway, get out your acrylic paint and let's roll the tape. I'm working on a 30 centimeter by 40 centimeter canvas and I've toned it with a layer of burnt sienna which helps to warm up the painting as it comes through the paint layers and overall adds vibrancy to it. I'm using a number one round brush and before I start sketching out the composition I find where the middle of the canvas is and I do this by just imagining two diagonal lines and marking where they would roughly meet. This is going to make it easier for me to sketch out the composition. So as I'm sketching out the composition, I'll just quickly show you some footage of the area that I was painting. The location for this painting is a place in southern New Zealand called Paradise. And Paradise is about an hour away from Queenstown. This is a very beautiful area surrounded by high mountains and for me it's a favourite location for painting outdoors on plain air. I painted this view of the mountains on a beautiful spring day and I took lots of reference photos as it gave me an idea for a studio painting, the one which you're about to see. There's lots of elements in this view that would make a great painting. First of all the mountains but then also the contrast between the strong light and the shadows, the trees and the beautiful green grass and water that's in the foreground. Before I start applying the paint, I'll quickly go over the idea behind the composition. I am loosely using a diagonal line composition. And this can be a line or a series of lines that goes from the upper left corner of the painting down to the lower right. This type of composition can make your paintings look dramatic, especially when you're painting mountains. I've then made Mount Chaos the focal area of the painting, and the mountain stream leads the eye towards it and adds some rhythm to the composition. If you'd like to learn more about composition, check out the link below in the description box where I've written a blog post on five composition ideas to improve your landscape painting. The colours I'm using for this painting include Titanium White, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Azo Yellow, Perinone Orange, Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue and Thalo Green. And I'm using mainly flat brushes and round brushes to paint this scene. Whenever I start a painting, whether it's an acrylic painting or oils, I always take the same approach, and that's to establish my dark values and shadows first. Value refers to how light or dark a colour is. And by establishing your darks first, it makes it much easier to create an atmospheric perspective in your painting, 
As well as being able to achieve the correct colour and tone for the areas of your painting that are in light. If you are unsure of where your lights and darks are in your reference photo, then just switch it to black and white. Here you can clearly see where the lights and darks are. So the sky and the snow that's in light on the mountains are the lightest values in the painting. Then followed by the grass which is also relatively light in value. The shadows in the mountains are a mid-tone and then you can see that the shadows in the trees in the mid-ground are getting darker in value. The darkest values in the photo are the trees on the right and the shadows in the mounds of dirt in the foreground. You'll find your darkest darks and your lightest lights in the foreground, but as you go into the distance, darks are not quite dark and lights are not quite light as the tonal scale narrows. So you need to keep this in mind for when you paint any landscape. Get all your values right in the painting and you'll be in a world of landscape painting awesomeness. So now I've just briefly talked about values and shadows, let's talk about the colours that I'm using in order to mix these mountain shadows. The mountain shadows are kind of a neutral blue-grey with a bit of a violet tint. So in order to mix this I start with ultramarine blue and then I mix in some burnt sienna which desaturates the blue. As burnt sienna is a dark orange it desaturates the blue because orange is opposite to blue on the colour wheel and so the two colours cancel each other out when combined. I then add some alizarin crimson to give the mixture a violet tint and then I lighten the whole value by adding titanium white. You won't need much burnt sienna or alizarin crimson but if you find your mixture is looking a bit muddy then add some more ultramarine blue. So I use this colour to block in the major zones of the mountain shadows. I leave a few gaps in the mountain shadows so I can add a few highlights later on. Next I start painting in the shadows of the trees in the midground and as they're closer the shadows are darker in value. I'm still using the same colours that I used in the mountain shadows but with less titanium white which is going to darken the value. I use a number 6 flat brush to paint all these shadows in the mid-ground trees. I also use the same colour to paint the shadow reflections in the water in the foreground. Next I paint the shadows of the trees in the foreground and the shadows in the mounds of dirt. These are the darkest shadows in the painting. As I want a green element in my shadows I mix a combination of ultramarine blue with some yellow ochre which creates a very dark green. I then round off the colour by adding in some burnt sienna just to add a red element to the mix. At this stage of the painting I'm not too concerned with colour, I just want to get my values right. Next I start painting the sky and I mix a combination of ultramarine blue with some titanium white and I add just a little bit of phthalo green which just makes that blue a bit more rich. I apply the colour with a number 10 flat brush and I use this so I can cover ground quickly. I start painting the snow that's in shadow on the mountains and this is a combination of ultramarine blue with a bit of alizarin crimson and some titanium white. I need to make sure that the value of the snow shadow mix is darker than the sky otherwise it's going to get lost in it. And actually in the end I decided to make the value of the sky towards the horizon lighter by mixing in some more titanium white. I add some more snow shadows to the tops of the mountains on the left and I also darken the shadow a little bit on the mountain just because it was a little bit too light. I have to paint relatively quickly as the paint dries quickly and so I'm going for a bit more of a painterly style with this painting. 
The other thing to bear in mind with acrylics is that they dry darker than when you first lay them on when they're wet. And this is something I completely forgot about and it caught me out later on in the painting. Here I'm adding some highlights to the snow on the mountains. And I don't want them completely white just yet because I want to add some lighter layers later on which is actually going to make them look more realistic. So I make the value a little darker by adding in some ultramarine blue, some burnt sienna and a bit of alizarin crimson. I use my sky mix to paint the reflection in the water and I'm just using a number 10 flat brush here. I'm not concerned about detail at all at this stage because I'm going to come back to it once it's dry. I use a number 6 flat brush and I start blocking in the trees in the midground. To mix the green I use a combination of ultramarine blue with some yellow ochre and some burnt sienna and then I mix in titanium white to lighten the value. The green is definitely richer but it's not overly saturated and I don't want it jumping forward in the painting. So I have to be careful that my mix isn't too saturated. I'm using a number 6 flat brush to paint the trees in the midground. Next I start painting the grass in the foreground. The green of the grass here is not only much lighter in value than compared with the trees, but the colour is also much more saturated. So to mix the green I use ultramarine blue with some azo yellow which forms a basic green mix. And then to warm up the mixture I mix in some perinone orange and some alizarin crimson. This also helps to make the green look more organic as there's a red element in there. I can make the colour lighter by adding in some titanium white. And then I can also soften the green by mixing in some yellow ochre. For now I'm just going to keep the value of the green a bit darker so I can add some lighter layers later on in the painting. And I apply the mixture with a number 6 flat brush. I vary the mixture to create some different greens which adds texture in the grass. So for example the grass that's on the ridge here, I've added a bit more perinone orange to the mix. If I want to green up the grass a bit more and increase the saturation without altering the value too much, I can mix in some phthalo green. Next I paint the foliage on the willow trees. And the one thing I've noticed about the foliage on willow trees in spring is it's quite light in value, almost similar to grass. So using my existing green mix I just add a tiny bit more ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow to it. I paint the sandy dirt colour of the floodplain. And this is a combination of ultramarine blue with some burnt sienna and some yellow ochre to warm it up. I also use a lot of titanium white. I use the same colours but add in some azo yellow into the mix and paint the tree that's on the right here. At this point the blocking in stage is pretty much complete and I start adding more of these shadows in the foreground so I can start building up detail upon it. I'm still using the same colours that I was using during the blocking in stage which includes ultramarine blue, some yellow ochre and burnt sienna. Next I sharpen up the shadows in the mid-ground trees but this time I'm using a combination of ultramarine blue with some yellow ochre and a tiny bit of burnt sienna. So this just adds a new dimension to the mix as it's on top of the previous layer which I used during the blocking in phase. I need to keep in mind that the shadows in these trees need to be lighter than the shadows in the foreground. I'm now at the point in the painting where I can start adding more detail to it and I go back to those mountain shadows and start adding more detail. I add more of the exposed rock faces in the side of the mountain and this is going to help define the form of the mountain 
and make it look more realistic. I'm still using the same colour combination that I used during the blocking in stage. I use a number 2 short flat brush or bright in order to paint the exposed rock faces in the distant mountain. And as it's a bit further away, I need to make that value a little lighter. So now I'm adding more detail. Next I paint in the suggestion of trees that are in full sunlight on the distant mountains. Because they're so far away, the green is very desaturated and there's a subtle difference in tone between the areas in shadow and the areas in light, so I need to take this into account. I mix a combination of ultramarine blue with some burnt sienna, alizarin crimson and titanium white. And then I mix in just the smallest amount of yellow ochre just to give it that green element to it. I then apply the colour with a number 2 flat brush. I add more highlights to the tops of those mid-ground trees and also increase the saturation a little. So I'm still using a combination of ultramarine blue mixed in with burnt sienna and yellow ochre, but then I increase the saturation by adding in some azo yellow and perinone orange. I'm just going over the tops of the tree canopies which helps to make them look more realistic and give it a three-dimensional form. I come back and start working on the grass in the foreground, but this time I'm using lighter colour. I'm still using the same colour combination that I was using in the blocking in stage, but I've varied the amounts of the colours to create different shades of green. The main important thing is that the value of the green is lighter than the previous layer. I use a number 4 flat brush to add more detail to the grass in the foreground, and I paint more highlights on the ridges. I add more snow to the mountains and paint the areas that are in light, but this time using a snow mix that's lighter in value than the previous layer. But I still don't have it completely white, so I'm still mixing in a small amount of ultramarine blue, some burnt sienna and some alizarin crimson. This time though, I'm a bit more selective about where I'm adding the colour. I start working on the water in the foreground, and I repaint the areas where it's reflecting the shadows of the trees and the mountains. I also repaint the main body of the water which is reflecting the sky and I'm still using the exact same colours that I used in the sky mix. This includes ultramarine blue with titanium white and a very small amount of phthalo green. And I can use that same colour combination to paint the ripples on the water. But I need to lighten the value so I add a bit more titanium white to the mix. I add the ripples using a number 4 flat brush. Now it was this part of the painting when it suddenly dawned on me that I'd forgotten that acrylics dry darker. The trees on the distant mountains looked a bit too dark, so I had to repaint them and add some lighter colour to it. I add more snow shadows to the mountains and then I work on the water in the foreground, painting in the sparkles where it's directly reflecting the sunlight. As with the snow layers, I've kept the sparkles a little bit darker in value by adding in some ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and alizarin crimson. I'll be saving my lightest values until the end of the painting and so I'll be adding some final sparkles to that water. Following that, I then sharpen up the shadows in the mid-ground trees and the shadows in the foreground. I'm adding much more detail now. I use a dagger brush to add more texture in the grass. 
And again, I mixed the same greens that I made before, varying the colors a little bit to create some different shades of green. And then I work my brush in different directions to add texture to the grass. I paint some lighter colors to the tops of the trees in the midground here. And again, I don't want the green too saturated, so I mix a combination of ultramarine blue with some yellow ochre. Then I increase the saturation by mixing in some azo yellow and some perinone orange. I also mix in some titanium white. The foliage in the willow trees is more vibrant, so I add some phthalo green to my existing green mix. For the tree in the foreground on the right side of the painting, the foliage is a kind of yellowy colour as it was early spring and the leaves were starting to grow back. So taking my existing green mix, I just add a bit more cadmium yellow and cadmium orange and also lighten the value with some titanium white. Once I've painted the foliage that's in light, I also repaint the shadow areas just to tidy it up. I use a number one round brush and mix up some more mountain shadow tones and I paint in the exposed rocks in the sides of the mountains, areas where the snow hasn't been able to stick to it. I also just tidy up some of those areas by adding in some snow shadow mix. Turning my attention to the water in the foreground, it's here where I'm now going to be adding my lightest values, which are the sparkles in the water. And I just add them by mixing in titanium white with a tiny amount of azo yellow. I'm applying the paint with a number zero round brush. I'm able to then use that existing white mixture and apply the final highlights to the mountains. So I'm just going to paint some certain areas here, just to indicate the tops of ridges within the mountain snow that's reflecting the direct sunlight. So this is where I'm adding my lightest values. The painting is now almost complete and I add a few little finer details like the suggestion of individual blades of grass that are shining in the direct sunlight. I paint some wispy clouds using a number 12 filbert brush and I'm just using my existing mountain snow mixture. Short of adding a few refinements and final details, the painting is complete. So I'll end the video by just sharing a few tips for painting landscapes and acrylics. Whether you're painting with oils or acrylics, I always think it's easiest to paint in all your shadows and dark values first. If you do this, when you come to paint the areas of your painting that are in light, you'll find it much easier to get the value and the saturation of your colour correct. The important thing to remember with acrylics is that they dry darker than when you first apply them when they're wet. So you must take this into account when you're painting. And obviously, of course, they dry very quickly. Again, whether you're painting with oils or acrylics, I always think it's a good idea to block in the whole painting in one go so that you can see the relationships between your colours and values and whether they're working or not. And then finally, as always, save your lightest values until the end of the painting. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to learn more about painting landscapes, check out some of the written painting tutorials that I have on my website. The link's down below. Also, if you'd like to follow me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. So you can follow me there also, and I update those sites pretty frequently. So until then, I'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned.